Yesterday, Liz Truss was finally announced as the winner of the Conservative leadership election. And while that might not be a massive surprise to anyone with even a passing interest in British politics, her arrival into number 10 does still mark a significant change in the government's political direction. So in this video, we're going to take a look at what's just happened, what a Liz Truss government might look like, and whether it stands a chance of winning the next general election. Let's start with a quick overview of what happened on Monday. As predicted by the bookies, Liz Truss beat Rishi Sunak in the final round of the Conservative leadership election, winning 57% of the eligible votes from the Conservative membership. I, Sir Graham Brady, the returning officer for the Conservative and Unionist Party leadership election, declare that the total number of valid votes given to each candidate was as follows. Rishi Sunak, 60,399, Liz Truss, 81,326. Therefore, I give notice that Liz Truss is elected as the leader of the Conservative and Unionist Party. We'll come up on stage. In her acceptance speech, Truss was conspicuously kind to her predecessor, Boris Johnson, parroting some of his favourite talking points and applauding his widespread popularity. And I also want to thank our outgoing leader, my friend, Boris Johnson. You got Brexit done. You crushed Jeremy Corbyn. You rolled out the vaccine and you stood up to Vladimir Putin. You were admired from Kiev to Carlisle. However, while Truss might say she's a big fan of Johnson's, her policies are actually pretty different. While Johnson didn't mind raising taxes and was almost exclusively focused on levelling up, Truss is fervently anti-tax and conspicuously relaxed about inequality. But to look at everything through the lens of redistribution, I believe is wrong. Because what I'm about is about growing the economy. And growing the economy benefits everybody. But you're happy but with... This, but this, this is a really important point because so far, the economic debate for the past 20 years has been dominated by discussions about distribution. But and what's happened mm -hmm. is we have had relatively low growth. So we've had no more than an average of 1% growth and that has been holding our country but back. And it means. Get into a debate about economic that, theory. This, this is one is... of the things that you've promised clearly. You want to do it. Absolutely. You believe it's the right thing. I do is believe it, it's the right. But thing. is it fair that on this yes, decision. Yes, it is fair. It is fair yes, to give the wealthiest fair. people more money back. It is fair. Similarly, while Johnson was pretty passionate about green politics and net zero, Truss is apparently more skeptical than her predecessor was. And has said that she'd scrap green levies and express an interest in fracking. This is what he has done. He has tried to build up leverage by making Europe dependent on Russian gas. So what will we do must, if First it gets of all, worse? we must never ever get in that same position again. And this is why it's important that we develop renewables, we develop nuclear, that we work with our European partners to develop alternative forms of energy. It's also very important we use the resources in the North Sea there's more we can do to exploit current gas fields. I support exploring fracking mm -hmm. in parts of the United Kingdom uh, where that can be done. There's very little evidence, though, that that could quickly make a big difference. And there's lots of evidence that local communities don't want fracking. Well, all of these things add up. And it's also about more offshore wind. It's about moving faster on all of those projects. So if Truss and Johnson aren't all that aligned, let's take a look at Truss's stated policies, starting with her economic policies. Essentially, Truss is low tax, but high spend. Obviously, given the UK is already running a deficit, this will require yet more borrowing. But Truss argues that one, her policies will actually drive growth which should eventually bring down the UK's debt to GDP ratio. Two, that interest rates are still low by historical standards, so borrowing is relatively cheap at the moment. And three, 
Some of this borrowing could be mitigated by refinancing the debt, which would basically involve increasing the average length of maturity on government bonds and designated some of the debt as special COVID debt set to be paid off in the distant future. And that's what she claims at least. But regardless of where the money's coming from, let's start by discussing her tax policies. And there are three areas where Truss wants to pursue tax cuts. Firstly, she wants to reverse the national insurance rise. We promise not to raise it in our manifesto in 2019. The people here who voted Conservative for the first time expect us to fulfil our promises. Secondly, she wants to reverse the corporation tax hike, which was set to see the tax rise from 19% to 25% next year, as well as saying that she wants to impose a temporary moratorium on green energy levies to cut £153 from people's energy bills. But it's worth mentioning here that green levies will only account for 3% of energy bills if the price cap goes up next year. So those are her tax priorities. But what else is she doing to help real people right now? Well, there's been some speculation over the last few days that Truss is considering freezing energy bills for certain people. But that isn't guaranteed. For the vast majority of the campaign, as well as as recently as Sunday, Truss suggested that she would only be using tax cuts to provide support to families. Now, you want to reverse the national insurance rise. But let's take a look at what that would mean. So if we can put our graphic up on the screen here, the poorest would stand to gain about £7 from that. At the top of the income bracket, the wealthiest people in the country would gain 900 maybe even nearly £2,000. Is that... Fair. Well, the people at the top of the income distribution pay more tax. Mm -hmm. So inevitably, when you cut taxes, mm -hmm. you tend to benefit people who are more likely to pay tax. Of course, there are some people who don't pay tax at, at all. all. Mm -hmm. But to look at everything through the lens of redistribution, I believe is wrong. Because but what I'm about is about growing the economy. And growing the economy benefits everybody. So it's not exactly clear what Trust wants to do here. And it does seem that her only strategy is to continue cutting taxes. While at the same time, she also seems to want to spend more money. During the campaign, Trust said that she wants to raise defence spending to 3% of GDP. Continue with social care spending, despite scrapping the national insurance rise, which was supposed to finance it. Ensure that the NHS budget rises in real terms and continue the pension triple lock. In fact, the only places where Truss actually seems to want to make cuts are the civil service, where she said that she wants to cut jobs to pre-Brexit levels, and welfare, which she insists is in need of, quote, reform. It's not all that specific, but those are her economic policies. On to her social policies. Unsurprisingly, Truss is firmly on the right when it comes to culture war issues. And as such, she wants to expand the UK's controversial Rwanda asylum system, as well as cracking down on what she describes as identity politics and woke culture within the civil service. When it comes to the environment, while Truss has said that she'll scrap green levies, she has still committed to net zero and said that she would invest heavily in nuclear power. So that's what Truss's policy platform looks like. But are these plans popular? How electable will this new Truss government be? Well, if polling's anything to go by, then the answer is not very. Politico's poll of polls for the UK gives Labour a nine-point lead over the Conservatives at the moment. And perhaps more worryingly for Truss, opinion polling has found that the more voters see from Truss, the less they actually like her. In early August, a large majority of 2019 Conservative voters thought that she was trustworthy, likeable, compassionate, a strong leader, and in touch with ordinary people. However, after a month of campaigning and actively putting herself out there, that's essentially reversed, with even her own supporters' faith slipping. Now, to be fair, we are quite a long way away from the next election in 2024. But with tumultuous times ahead, things aren't likely to get better for Truss. And even her first 100 days don't look like plain sailing, with a lot of difficult decisions ahead. 
Ultimately then, how she handles these choices will be vital. So over the next 100 days, we'll be tracking what happens in our new podcast, Truss Issues. There, we'll be documenting and analyzing Truss's first 100 days in office, discussing if she's been able to deliver on her promises and how she handles some of the most turbulent times in modern political history. If you want to check out the show, then you'll be able to watch on the TLDR Podcast YouTube channel. Or very soon, you'll be able to listen along too in your favorite podcast app. Right now, though, be sure to subscribe to TLDR Podcasts on YouTube so you can be notified once the audio feed goes live and make sure that you catch the very first episode.